The MacBook Air has finally gotten the refresh that it deserved back in 2018, but unfortunately it is still a rather expensive device to be called an entry-level MacBook. So Apple fixed that by axing the 2018 MacBook Air and introduced this new 2019 MacBook Air with a few subtle changes. Now first of all, it's got an upgraded display with True Tone technology, there's a improved butterfly keyboard mechanism, and last but not the least, price drop. Yes, everybody loves a price drop. The MacBook Air now starts at 4,699 ringgit instead of the 5,000 plus ringgit price tag from the last round, which is technically a rather attractive option. So with this SATA upgrades and its processor, whatever that's inside in this machine, is this finally the entry-level MacBook to go for? I've been using this for over a month and this is my review of the 2019 MacBook Air. The MacBook Air isn't the lightest 13-inch laptop as it weighs 1.23 kilograms, but it isn't a heavy machine either, so you are still going to find it really comfortable to transport around. There's no denying the great build quality of the laptop with its magnesium alloy chassis, but one would definitely question the reliability of the keyboard. I'm glad to report that it is much improved from the previous generation butterfly keyboard as it offers better tactile and a quieter typing experience. Though the trackpad size isn't as large as the one you get on the MacBook Pro, it still has excellent tracking precision and I never needed to use a mouse. Coming from the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air's display still looks really good for content consumption and casual graphics work. Screen brightness isn't an issue and I'm usually on 60% of brightness when using indoors. There is a little color shift if you watch the screen from sideways which isn't too bad. I will usually also enable True Tone if I'm not doing any picture adjustment work as it soothes my eyes. There has never been a laptop's loudspeaker in the same class I've been impressed with, and the MacBook Air's top firing stereo speakers are great. They can sound very loud when maxed out and delivers an impressive sound stage and low frequency response. So, does the MacBook Air feels underpowered like some reviewers have claimed to be? Well, it's a pretty underwhelming device on paper with a Core i5-8210Y processor and 8GB of RAM. But I've been using the public beta of macOS Catalina throughout the review period and so far it has no issues in acing productivity tasks. Until I kept a few more browser tabs open, only it starts to show its limits and that's normal with only 8GB of RAM. So I would suggest that you max it out upon purchase. Although the MacBook Air isn't made to do CPU intensive tasks, I'm surprised that it can still handle lightweight 4K video edits on Final Cut Pro, though I wouldn't recommend you use it for important content creation projects. I'm not going to touch on every feature of macOS Catalina in this review, but there are a few things I would love to briefly highlight. First, Apple Arcade. There are already several games that you can download and most of them play well on the MacBook Air's hardware. There's also the new sidecar feature that lets you mirror or extend your display to your iPad wirelessly, which I still find it to be unstable at times but works well when using a wired connection. And finally, I'm just glad that I can manage my iOS devices using the Finder app instead of iTunes. In terms of battery life, the MacBook Air will easily last 8 hours of heavy combined usage. I also love the fact that the battery doesn't drain a lot when in standby, which in fact sometimes I only need to charge the device after 2 days. This is something that not many laptops of the same class can offer and it is the solid reason why you should go for it if battery life is your top priority. Apple has done a great job on the refreshed MacBook Air even though it doesn't have a major specs bump over the 2018 model. Well, it is the most affordable MacBook that you can buy right now. Well. Technically not the most affordable, but I would say that if you still consider that old silver design, that is still the most affordable MacBook Air. But if you want a modern MacBook Air, this is it. It's really much more affordable right now, and you should go for it if you want an inexpensive upgrade from your old MacBook. Right, it is the most affordable MacBook right now, but it is not the most affordable lightweight laptop. And I think Apple could have just cut more costs by just removing Thunderbolt 3 ports on the MacBook Air because like seriously, people who's gonna buy this laptop is probably not gonna connect it to high-speed storages or high-resolution monitors because you have the MacBook Pro for that. So yeah, that's it for my review of the 2019 MacBook Air. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Be sure to subscribe to KL Gadget TV to see more tech videos just like this. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.